everyone, Christian here, and I just want to give a little update. I have moved back to Cape Coral, and so it's been about nine months, and uh, I haven't been taking care of the palms out here in the front. Ashley's been kind of taking care of this area. Um, a little spoiler alert, it's a little bit of a mess. We got weeds to get rid of and uh, areas to kind of turn into proper landscape beds. But <clears throat> I wanted to show you guys a few things that, you know, have been doing all right, have been doing really well, um, haven't been doing so well. So I did a vlog on this palm here. This is Morichella aculeata. This is a tropical, this is a palm from a very tropical region. It's basically the Amazonian basin. It grows in uh, tidal areas where it can flood and it can, and then it can be dr dry for, you know, a few months out of the year. And this palm has been the biggest surprise to me. Now, it, it doesn't look like much, but I plant this as like a one gallon plant, um, maybe a year and a half ago. And uh, I didn't expect much because I knew where it came from. There weren't a lot of people that had them in their yards. Although Sarasota Alex had planted one in his old house in Sarasota. And then he watched it grow. He actually, I think he got a second one and it also uh, was doing quite well. It did take a little bit of burn in the 2017 cold that we had. It got down to about 33 here, probably about 30 at his house because um, he lives a little bit further inland. But <clears throat> I mean, this palm for what it is, it's, you know, it's a clumping palmate silver. Uh, it has plenty of silver color, both on the undersides of the leaflet there and on the bases of the petioles and it clumps. Um, it has minimal arming on it. You can see, I can run my finger and I, I start hitting them, but they don't jab into you like a thorn. They're just there just to kind of keep some animals, I guess, away. I'm not quite sure the purpose of it. Maybe it's, you know, through evolution, just gain those thorns. So, but it's been doing really well. Um, it's watered intermittently. We don't get a whole lot of water this time of year, a whole lot of rain this time of year. We did get plenty of rain yesterday, but in the summertime, this area will flood and they actually like that. So it's kind of... Um, it kind of mimics the what they get as far as water in the Amazonian basin now. It's only about, it's maybe 60 degrees out right now. And the cold weather doesn't seem to really bother it. Um, it I would say, you know, it's seen 35 and nothing has happened. And, you know, uh, Alex has seen less and his has come back. And it grows fast, especially if you fertilize it. Now, I haven't fertilized this. I haven't fertilized any of these. Just because these are not cleaned up, I don't want to fertilize weeds. That's one tip is... Don't, buy, don't fertilize if you have to weed first because then you're just going to start pulling up weeds with fertilizer. You're going to fertilize the weeds as well. It's just going to become more difficult. So sorry for the shadow, but this is the time of day. I can't really get a good... This is the new opening leaflet. You can see how deeply segmented they are. It's all the basically all the way to the hastula there. And um, it actually doesn't really have much of a hastula, but basically the base of the, uh, the petiole, or the top of the petiole, if you will. So you can see, I mean, it has, you know... The clumps are, have new spears. It looks really healthy. Um, I can't see a new spear coming out of there, but I shouldn't because this one is just opening. So um, the other palm that I planted here that I had since 2009, and it really was neglected. I didn't. Um, I left it at uh, my friend Rusty's and uh, didn't even know it was there. This was in like a tall pot maybe three years ago. So um, this is Adelaea speciosa, from Brazil, also from Brazil. And uh, I think it grows throughout South America. I got to check the total uh, distribution area. But <clears throat> you can see that it's doing really well. It has a new leaf. It's about, I'd say, four feet tall. And, uh, you know, it got, I think it got whacked with a weed whacker accidentally. But you can see this this, this whole bed needs to be redone. But um, that's kind of what I'm going to work on. Hopefully you'll see some progression. Uh, I have a few ideas. And you can still see around the back here that heel. Now, you gotta be really careful when you plant palms with heels. So like Dipsis, Sable, Adelaea, um, Kentiopsis even makes a heel for a period of time. Not all of them do, but most of them do. And uh, so, you know, be careful when you're mulching. Do not over mulch on that heel. Um, treat it like a part of the, uh, the trunk and just don't bury it. And you can see it created this kind of pseudo trunk here. And I'm not sure what that is. I've never seen that. It's, it's woody but it's not a trunk. Um, it might just be part of the heel that's kind of covering the base of the trunk. So 
I'm curious if that'll disappear over time. Because I really haven't seen that even in an Adelaide. Um, maybe I haven't grown enough Adelaide to this size. But it is unique in that I have not seen it before. So um, some other things that were kind of growing around here. You can see this is, you look around, and there's this little guy right here. And he's hanging on. And he's actually, surprisingly, he's actually not looking too bad. Um, I mean, he's looking bad, but he's not dying. Uh, this is Copernicia macroglossa. It's probably been run over a couple times with a weed whacker and or lawnmower. But uh, the new leaf is looking great. It just needs it needs a lot of water and some fertilizer. It just needs some care. And, uh, you know, I haven't really been here much. So I hope I tr I'm going to attempt to save this, this palm. It's not dying is basically what I'm trying to say. So um, I did have a Mauritia flexuosa, which is related to Mauritiella, um, in this area that did succumb to some sort of I don't think it was the cold I think it was more just uh it was someone thought it was just a weed and pulled it up or weed whacked it and it couldn't handle it I believe that palm is a little bit more tropical than Mauricella I think it's due to the fact that this has more subterranean stems and when it's subterranean they can handle more abuse and so I'm going to chalk it up to that there's that coconut that you guys have seen so many times and it's growing, but it's just not growing at the rate a coconut should grow. And uh, I'm not really sure what to do with it. It's kind of big now. It'd be sort of a pain to dig it up. Um, when I first came here, this was three or four feet tall. And you can, you can see the degraded coconut husk is still there. Um, and the roots are above ground. And that's the reason why, is this, like I said, this area floods in the summer sometimes. <clears throat> and coconuts don't like flooding water. They don't mind, like tidal like surge from like say the ocean as long as it drains back out but if the water sits those roots are actually it's bringing the palm up to make sure that the roots don't rot it's actually like a self-sustaining mechanism so you can see i mean as a healthy new sphere the new leaf and the leaves are getting progressively bigger they don't have any mechanical issues so when you see that the, you know the, despite the fact that there's brown leaves on here um it's it's hanging in there so we'll see what happens again you know, this needs to be cleaned up. I have that Syrian marble that, the long story how I got that, but it, I thought I was going to do something with that. Maybe I still will. Have some nice uh, limestone rock, which is always beautiful, and it's great to add to your yard. It uh, kind of has that Jurassic look to it, if you will. And um, let's see what else. Well, things that haven't been doing too well are these uh, Bocarnias, the ponytail. Um, you know, this has one head, or it has one, one trunk, two heads left and the reason this isn't doing well is just really this is 30 something years old it's probably been uh the one we had a pretty bad fl uh, flooding 2016 it seemed to kind of go downhill i cut off these two trunks they were dead and the one over here is doing a little bit better not excellent but it's better um you know it hasn't had any dead trunks but it should be bigger it should be beefier these trunks should be beefier but you can see that there's you don't, what you don't want to see on succulents is a lot of like uh, mold or lichen or moss. Um, you can see the remnants of it over here. I don't know if you can really see it that well in the, in the shade. But you, you won't see it on the other side because the sun will probably burn off. But here's some of that. You can see that right there. So, um, but the base looks good. Um, the main problem is you can't really park the cars up. See if I take this car and I pull it up and try to open the door right near the garage. It's going to hit it. So... Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but, <clears throat> you know, still doing, doing well. Uh, now another palm that I want to discuss really quick. Let's walk over here real quick. Now this, again, Ashley doesn't own a pair of small pruners, so this palm doesn't look like it's done much, and I didn't expect it to do very much. This is a hurricane palm. This is the Diosperma album variation rubrum, as you can tell from the red, uh, rachis there and red uh, midribs. You can see the midribs are pronounced there in red. So if you want to know what a midrib is, that's a midrib right there, this red area right here. And it needs to be trimmed up a little bit. Now this is a crown shafted palm. Sorry, I'm gonna get out of the shadow there. But it doesn't look crown shafted. The, the leaflets hold so strong to the, to the trunk or the base that uh, it's hard to see that until it really forms a trunk and you can see the, the, you know, the, the crown shaft forming. So when I when I got this palm, I got it for free. It was kind of a rescue palm. It was uh, it was basically at a 70 degree angle in the container. 
So I planted it as if it were, you know, at 70 degrees and it righted itself. That's, and it probably took a year just to do that. So this is why these palms have not been growing that fast. And again, it needs a trimming, it needs some water. Um, like this time of year, we didn't have rain for about two and a half weeks. And then we got about, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half of rain in the past two days. So, um, you know, and there's another one across the driveway. Uh, <clears throat> over there, you can see there's Roystonia. That should really be bigger again. Well, it just needs more water. It needs to be trimmed up a little bit. Um, I'll go over the non-palms in another video. I don't want to stretch this out too much. People don't tend to like to watch videos over 15 minutes. So I'm going to go over to one last palm. We'll go this way here. This one's doing a little bit better. I think there's a little more water in the area. Um, this is the same as the other one, but this one was not tilted. So this one's probably one year ahead of that because it didn't have to tilt. But again, it needs, needs a good trimming, especially when you're mowing the lawn. You don't want to snag that. Um, but here is, I've done a video on this a couple times. This is Caryota mitis, um, this cl uh, your classic clumping fishtail. And they decided to cut off the, the, the tallest of the trunks uh, had fruited, so they were actually dying. So uh, they decided to go ahead and cut off those top trunks, and it actually has a good look about it. I mean, it's not, it's a big, bushy, palmy, fishtail-y looking thing. And, I mean, it, it kind of looks messy, but it really isn't that bad. It isn't like a disgusting mess. It doesn't, you know, create a lot of leaf litter. It tends to hold a lot of its leaflets for a while, so it doesn't have all these dead leaves hanging. So if you want to see something interesting, that's a little mango. Someone dropped, must have dropped a seed in here, eating mango. And this has been growing here for four years, but it doesn't get any sun. So you can see down there the leaflets. You can see the new flush. Very easy to pick out a mango from other palms. I'm so sorry, from other even fruiting trees because of the... The shape of the leaflet, the, the kind of this long lanceolate leaflet, um, and the new flush, which is like a reddish maroon turning to uh, a copper color. So, but this is healthy. Uh, I'm going to get working on cleaning this stuff up, making it look nice, and hopefully you guys will see a much better uh, product in the end, if you will. So, anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a little bit of an update. I wanted to kind of get this vlog back and going. I have more palms to work with. I have more room to work with. I have more, just a lot more stuff that I can do down here where, uh, up in Venice, it, that just wasn't the case. So I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did give it a thumbs up, if you guys are new to the channel, you want to see more palms, uh, stuff, consider s subscribing and hitting that bell notification. I do go live and discuss palms. If you want some free advice, I give it out in the live streams. And, uh, I mean, besides the vlogs and, uh, if you have any questions about, palm care in general this really isn't about a specific palm so or if, if a certain condition leave it down below i'll try and get to them a lot of times my notifications are a little bit off um and i'll get notifications of a, a comment days or even weeks later and so i apologize for people i have not gotten back to i will try and retro comment on a lot of these videos so anyways i'll see you guys later and thanks for watching